My name is Tasia Slade and today I will be talking about Starbucks. I wanted to choose this company because um, it is a place I go to often. I wanted to educate myself more on this company and see the ways that they are becoming more sustainable in ways that they could be more sustainable in with throughout their company. Um, Starbucks first opened up in 1971 and the first store was located at Pike Place Market in Seattle, Washington. There were three founders and their names are Gordon Bauker, Jerry Baldwin, and Zeb Ziggle. I'm not sure if I said that last one right, but again, um, was founded in 1971. That was the first location and gradually they kind of grew, you know, they went from one store to 17 stores to 60 to 84, but they saw the biggest change from 1995 to 1996. In 1995, they had 677 stores open, and by 1996, uh, they had over a thousand stores open. Again, 1995, 677 um, stores were open, and by the end of the year 2017, they calculated up it up to 26,696 stores that were actively open. Um, that is huge change from you know over time how. They saw that it was such a demanding place to go to, and so they had such success that they were wanting to open up beyond the United States. This is all around the country. It's worldwide. Um, I will be talking about seven key factors. I did attach the PowerPoint in the previous file. Um, I cannot attach it onto the video, video right now, so if you just want to follow along, I think that would be beneficial as I will just go over an overview over each slide. The first key factor is reputation and strength, which involves environmentally and social performance. Um, environmentally, they are focusing on making sure that their coffee beans and anything going into their tea is 100% natural. So making sure that all their products is 100% na are 100% natural is going directly through a farmer and not a supplier. They wanted to cut down on that to make sure that everything, they knew what was going in, in their products and how it was all being made. So they wanted to eliminate the supplier in this situation and go directly to a farmer. With social performance, um, I'm going to mention this a couple times. In April of 2017, Starbucks came out with an article stating that by the end of 2020, they are wanting to be more sustainable, if not 100% sustainable within their company. And I did not know that until I researched it. And so I think, you know, letting the consumer know is beneficial, <laughs> letting your investors know as well and seeing if you can get even more investors involved with saying, hey, we are wanting to strive to be that sustainability, trying to be, you know, that company that people are looking at encouraged by. And so I think, you know, putting that out there more is going to benefit them. The second key factor, um, Starbucks, has their own cups that they make and so a way to eliminate you know a lot of their manufacturing is to put more recycled bins within their stores and having people recycle their cups instead of just being thrown in a trash can and then making those cups that they sell out of those recyclable items this cuts down on costs this cuts down on manufacturing this puts them at a competitive advantage it's more effective because you have the supplies right there so it ends up being a lot more useful and a lot more beneficial. Um, and it opens up the consumer's eyes to a new market too, as well with looking at recycled items. So the third factor um, is productivity. Some way Starbucks could apply this is becoming more sustainable and reducing the cost again of manufacturing. That is a huge thing with this company having over 26,000 stores actively open. There is, there's so much going on with manufacturing that you know, there needs to be a solution to cut that down and to cut that down with, you know, going directly to a farmer for their coffee beans. But what more can they do? Having a, you know, two, three stores, excuse me, two or three manufacturers here within the United States is going to cut down that cost of shipment overseas. And it's going to cut down on pollution and how much you are damaging the environment and how much pollution you're putting in the environment. So I think cutting down on manufacturers, seeing what's important, where you need to put them, and figuring that all out. And you know, you may have to change the whole aspect, but if it's going to benefit the environment, it's in the end going to be worth it. Ways to increase efficiency is to communicate. Again, with the man whole manufacturing, the supply chain system, that whole thing requires um, communication. If that's not there and you're having to do things overseas, communication is key and very important in this uh, factor. 
The fourth factor, operational burden and interference. Again, um, Starbucks made that note uh, by 2020, they are wanting to be more sustainable. Um, and so by this, they are avoiding that public risk of, you know, having something come out, having a scandal come out, having something put in their product that shouldn't be. Their consumers know that, hey, this is what they're working on. This is what they want to strive to be. So they don't have to worry about it as much. And again, with Starbucks being such a large company, it's, you know, it's going to cause a lot of damage if something like that happens. They're going to lose consumers and investors. The fifth supply, <laughs> excuse me, the fifth factor is supply chain costs, excuse me, um, supplier, which involves supplier interaction. Um, what I learned from my research is that they have one one contract for all suppliers. They wanted to keep it true and wanted to keep it fair and the same for every single supplier. And if it didn't work out with that supplier and then, unfortunately, you know, they didn't have it at all. They wanted to make sure they stayed true to everybody. They are in constant communication. They want to be on good terms, have good relationship with their suppliers. Excuse me. Again, communication is an important part in this process of this factor as well. Um, making sure that, you know, your product is the right way, you are understanding where the supplier is getting their product is very important. Uh, the sixth key factor is cost of capital, uh, which is investors are were getting interested in Starbucks even more when they were making cuts back in 2009, but these cuts are very differently than what they are working on right now. Those cuts were focusing on cutting employees and cutting down stores and closing stores and all that this time investors are getting interested because they're becoming more sustainable they're wanting to see how they're getting involved with their social performance and their environmental performance and that is a huge thing within this company and so keeping everybody updated their investors updated is such a key thing with this point right here because investors kind of are the glue with this situation with such a large company and the seventh key factor is legal liability. Um, Starbucks has um, eliminated that risk, I should say. You know, they have that contract with suppliers. They have that article for 2020. They have, they're putting it out there, you know. I think they need to put it out a little bit more so it's widely known. But um, they are finding out new ways to grow natural products, making sure consumers are knowing that, you know, are there things that we need to take off the menu that are not 100% natural? What needs to happen here? You know, and they've taken those steps, they've taken those measurements to take, you know, whatever off the menu that they need to because they found out this isn't the best to be giving our consumers, you know, we need to take that step and eliminate it, you know. And so they just mainly wanted to focus on, um, all that and that puts Starbucks at a less risk for anything coming at them with legal liabilities in that way. So overall, um, I think after educating myself more on Starbucks and understanding the way it's working and the way that they are wanting their company to work, um, I think that I can see that they are striving to be sustainable, to have that sustainability within their company and making sure that everything is done correctly and everything is done 100% naturally is something that they are truly striving for. Um, personally, for me, I knew what I was getting was 100% natural uh, when I go to Starbucks and I order my drink, but I didn't know about all the other products. I didn't know what they were doing with coffee since I mainly get tea there. And their tea, I see how that works, and you can personally watch them, you know, see what they're putting into your tea as they're making it. So that also is comforting. Um, so I think overall, Starbucks is a company that I see, you know, by the end of 2020, achieving those goals of being 100% sustainable. If they take those measurements, you know, with the recycling, that's going to play a huge part. Their existing SMS, uh, finding more environmental and environment, excuse me, environmental and natural products for their drinks and recycling, cutting back on manufacturing is going to help a lot. And then also my suggestions to improve their system would be to make it known, um, to have recycling out there more, to have more communication, to have it on social media and all that essence, and um, having bins in their store to make it known. Um, I think that is going to play a huge factor with consumers getting involved as well. So again, I did speak about Starbucks and the way that they are already sustainable and ways that they could be more 
uh, sustainable within their company. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope you enjoyed the slide. Thank you for watching.